Welcome back to Good Morning Wildland. We are live in Los Angeles with Jeff Weitzman, the documentarian behind the new film, Cancer Can Be Killed. Thank you so much for being with Thank us today. Thank you so much Thank for you. all your work. It's such an important Thank conversation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So cancer can be killed naturally. Amen. Yes. Let's talk I mean, about this. Yeah. <laughs> it's mind blowing. So what happened for us was my wife got bladder cancer. She was told her bladder was gonna have to be removed, followed by chemo and radiation. She had a 50% chance of survival. And instead, we went to Germany, treated it naturally with focused heat, oxygen, and IV nutrients. And in 30 days, the cancer was completely gone. I, gone. I'm wow. really curious, what was the catalyst for making the decision to go to Europe to pursue this natural treatment? Her sister had had malignant melanoma. She'd been given six months to live. And so she was like, what do I have to lose? So five years prior to us going there, she went there, same thing, 30 days, cancer-free. She's been cancer-free since then. So our only question was, well, if it worked for her, will it work for us mm -hmm. and our kind of cancer? Mm -hmm. And it did. And this opened up a whole new window for me of like, oh my God, there's a way to kill cancer and we haven't been told right. what it is. And so I've got to make a film about this. Mm -hmm. So we know uh, my father's first <clears throat> path, and he's always educated me on this stuff, that basically in the cell, whether it be cancer or wherever, that basically you cleanse it out, bring the right nutrition in, that anything's possible, right? So they do, you said they did oxygen, IV therapy, and what else? IV nutrients <laughs> and focused heat. Now here's focused an interesting heat. fact. Cancer can't survive above 105 degrees. Normal cells can survive up to 120 degrees. So you just heat those cancer cells up above 105 and they die. The sauna, see, I've been telling you the whole time. <laughs> but I mean, it's so obvious and so easy. Mm -hmm. It begs the question, well, why aren't we doing that, right? The FDA will not allow us in America to even test focused heat, hyperthermia, as a way of treating <laughs> cancer. And then that begs the question, well, why not? Right. And of course, then it comes down to money. You follow the money and you find out, oh, well, there's a whole lot of people in power that don't want that to be done because they're making so much money. Well, and, and your film explores a lot of that. I'd love to take a peek at the trailer. Naturally, with no chemo, no radiation, and no radical surgery. I've got to find a way out of this. Like, I have to find some way out of this, you know, and I knew that it wasn't going to be through like chemo and all that stuff. If I did the chemo and everything, I wouldn't make it. And I knew that that was going to like happen for sure. So there's so many components to this and it's, it's overwhelming and I'm nervous and scared right now. And I certainly have my doubts. I, 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 I have to try this. I have to try this. Angels call to me. All the doctors were like, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? You want to die? Oh my gosh, the doctors are so anti-naturopaths. There's quite a few things we can do in Germany <laughs> that we can't do in the US. Um, one of them is regional hypothermia. Um, using this as a, a main tool for treating cancer. Here in the US, you can get regional hypothermia, uh, but the FDA likes it to be in connection with radiation and chemotherapy on head and neck tumors. It was not what I expected from cancer treatment. It was just actually almost fun. Very little pain, and I felt great because I was getting so many nutrients into my body. We're not giving cancer an opportunity to detour, but we're surrounding it on all sides, all the ways, the multifaceted ways in which it attacks the body, we're addressing all those simultaneously. So cancer has nowhere to run. The feeling that you get when you find out that it actually like worked, you know, like my husband and I were like just dumbfounded, you know, then that just gave us more confidence to keep pursuing what we were after. And once others begin to see that, they say, wait a minute, it wasn't the cancer that killed him, it was the chemotherapy. What I have found in all of this stuff put together is there's a thousand and one ways to kill cancer without going through chemo and without destroying your body. And chemo and radiation are just money makers for the, for the doctors.
know, we've been having this conversation about Western medicine versus Eastern medicine. We recently featured Kelly Gore is on the cover of Focus. You know, she made the documentary Heal, in which she had, you know, a lot of conversations with these non-traditional, non-Western doctors about curing yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, what has that conversation been like for you? Yeah, so my father was an anesthesiologist, right? So I was taught all my life growing up that these people were quacks, right? There's only one way to do things. But what I began to find was that what Western medicine does is they only test drugs for use on disease. Well, what if you have a disease that doesn't respond to drugs? Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? And cancer is one of those diseases. It just doesn't respond to drugs. It does respond to boosting the immune system and then letting one's own body flush out the cancer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in your on your website, I read and I love everything you say about cancer and how it's really our awakening to say we're out of alignment with mother nature and and I do believe that that's the shift is that to look at and shift to see the cancer is, is in a weird twisted way a blessing to say wake up you guys and not just individually but collectively as a culture that we're killing ourselves by the toxins in our food the environment what we're up to our stress levels and all the above speak on that a little bit yeah it's a wake-up call and cancer is just a symptom of something being out of balance. Mm -hmm. Now that's the tough part, is what's out of balance? So you do have to do some testing to find out, you know, what exactly is going on. But it could be toxins, it could be hormones, it could be metals in the body, it could be infected root canals. You know, those are all factors that sort of impinge on the body's ability to take care of itself. But then there's emotional issues. Mm -hmm. Like, what if a person just really hates themselves, you know, or can't get past something that happened early on? I understand that. Stuff that happened to us as children, you know, it's very, very heavy. What if you can't get past that? Well, now you have to, you finally have to deal with it. Cancer says, now's the time to deal with it. And you know what? You have permission to deal with it. And I think that's what happened for my wife and I, is we both got this wake-up call and we said, Okay, let's <laughs> let's find out everything that's out of balance, and we're on that journey now. Like you don't answer it all in one day. How do you do that? Because I think that's part of the challenge and the opportunity mm -hmm. is like, you know, Western medicine is great at testing yeah. in specific ways for specific things. Yeah. But when we're talking about a whole person, right? Psychological, emotional, physiological, biological, chemical, physical. How do you how do you get that done? I mean, it feels very complex. It feels overwhelming. How do you where do you even start? I know, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, for me, it's critical self-analysis. And um, I was talking to one guy, he said, my mind loves the stress, but mm. my body hates it. So maybe that's the first place we, we just stop, you know, and just go, okay, this is a wake up call. So now let me do, let me quiet everything down. Let me ask the questions, what's really going on here? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think you have to do it with other people. Like somehow you have to get with other people to get that feedback to know, Am I fooling myself here? What's really going on? I mean, for me, the Al-Anon program, which is like the co-program with Alcoholics Anonymous, has been so useful to like find new ways of thinking. But in terms of medically, we, do, we try to do as much testing as we can to find out what's actually going on. And that's what Western medicine is so good at, is all the testing. And we can use them for that. And then we can use the naturopaths to help us out. With, with testing maybe some of the other things they don't look at. Mm -hmm. For those people out there who don't know what Al-Anon is, it's for parents or uh, children or partners of alcoholics. But what I totally agree with is it's really about setting boundaries for yourself to be able to stand peace within yourself, right? It's Absolutely. such a great program and it's free. I mean, so if there's emotional <laughs> things going on, there's many 12-step things that help you deal with emotions and help you get back to peace. I mean, for me, it was it, it's finding a new way of thinking because the thinking that's wired in my brain is the thinking I grew up with in my alcoholic family, mm -hmm. which was you have a problem, you drink to solve that problem, right? Mm -hmm. But life doesn't work that way. Like you have to find other ways of being creative to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And I just need a place I can go where I can find that other way with other people who are right. doing that. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we can do in the American culture to continue that conversation and to really make a shift to make a difference here yeah. in our healthcare system. Yeah, I think I think what we have to well, it's already happening. There's a wake up happening where people are going. Wait a minute, I don't want to harm my body anymore to like get better. And if a doctor's telling you your only option is to hurt yourself to get better, then people are starting to say, 
wait a minute, that doesn't wow. sound right. And they can mm -hmm. look for other people with other answers. And for us, it was instead of going to the doctor to find the answer, let me go to the person who got cured. Let me talk to them, find out what they did. And as we start to shift our focus away from experts to people who actually had healing results. Well, they're an expert in their own right, right? because right. they've done it for themselves. Right. They sought the knowledge and they did the work. Thank you. Right? And in the documentary Heal and many of the movement of, of um, cancer awareness, basically, uh, they do have that one study where they did 3,500 case studies on spontaneous remission around cancer. And so there are kind of some nine principles that people did. But what you're doing is really a movement in of itself. So where can people find you? Where can they find these answers and discover all the new stories of people's recovery? Yeah, thank you. So my website is cancercanbekilled.com. Mm -hmm. And the film is on Amazon Prime Videos. It's also on iTunes and Google Play. And people can watch that there. And then I'm doing another documentary film right now about children. Because people don't know this, but children that have leukemia or lymphoma, the most common cancers, they go into remission in the first 30 days from chemo. And then their doctor tells them, well, now you need to do two to four more years of chemo so the cancer doesn't come back. And there are no happy endings from this. These kids that get long-term chemo have brain damage, organ failure, many of them die, and it's totally unnecessary. And so this next film is about those families that are fighting against the system and saying, no, wow. enough, we're not doing that. And wow. we're, gonna, we're gonna give our child nutrition, mm -hmm. detox them, and these kids are thriving. Wow. So tell us, because you can't say you cure cancer in America, so how are you getting around that? Well, I think cancer can be killed is a uh -huh. great way. Cancer can be healed. And there's always the human factor where um, a person has the right to maybe not do everything necessary to cure their cancer, and then it doesn't work out for them. So can we ever say it's 100%? No. But we can say for those people who really want to be healed, it's totally possible. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's information we didn't have 10 years ago. So inspiring. Well, thank you for sharing that light yeah, and that truth. So thank important. You. We appreciate so important. it. I had a dear a mentor of mine passed away from cancer, and um, and he was a brilliant man spiritually. Like I mean, could do things that I've never I've never known anyone on this planet to do. But he ate like crap, and right. he ended up getting bone cancer because he was so toxic from the food that he ate. And um, you know, there is a point in time where cancer has gone too far, and you maybe do need some medical help. And he went into chemo, and he just couldn't do it. He's this, it was just killing him. The chemo was killing him as well, and and it's just heartache. And I know that I just want to say thank you so much for all the work that you do to educate people and have mm -hmm. them aware of the food that they eat and aligning with Mother Nature and their emotions and everything else. It's such important work. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more. Good morning, La La Land.